we have a homework assignment. Uh, oh God! That Mike enjoyed. Uh, our homework <laughs> assignment from Professor Jacob Edwin was it was Sting versus Diamond Dallas Page, April twenty sixth, nineteen ninety nine. I think I got that date right off the top of my head. This was a Nitro. This was not the last match on the show. It was about halfway through the show. And uh, I, I loved this match uh, by itself. Uh, a little context I'm looking at, because yep. one thing I nope, do like nope. about the network right now is, is you get to see chapters on the show. Sure. And sure. I see that we start with Ric Flair and the mental institution on this one. So mm-hmm. that gives you an idea about where we're at in the WCW yeah. history. So Mike, let me let me let me tell you about this match. Tell tell me a story about this match. Tell me about Sting and Diamond Dallas right. Page. So this match, it's actually pretty good. Uh-huh. It, it's 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 pretty good. It's um, they fucking went at it. It, it was it was Nitro, nineteen ninety nine. To be fair, I was not expecting much. Um, but uh, you know, for it, it's the best Sting and DDP match you're probably ever gonna see. Peak DDP. Yeah. Absolutely, but I I I don't know Peak DDP because I never really liked him too much as a heel, mm-hmm. which he which he is in this match. Um, and the match is the match is really good. Like, uh, it's got a clean finish, which is nice. Um, it it teaches you that the counter to any RKO or diamond cutter is just grabbing a rope. <laughs> like it's it, it's it's literally just, it. the the counter is standing. Yeah. <laughs> the counter is stand. Wait, that's that's it. Ricky. That's supposed to do it out of the corner. I, I that's like the problem. I like that finish though. I, I no, like... I like the finish a lot too. Yeah, and I remember, I remember watching this finish live. Mm-hmm. But now, see, because I'm, I'm a bit of a good student. Um, I was trying to rack my brains. I'm like, I don't remember this legendary Sting WCW Championship run. Hmm. I, I don't <laughs> remember. I don't remember it. So, sort of what I did, I had I had an inkling, I had an idea in my brain. Because last week when we talked about this, we did over under number of run ins during the match. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert: there were no run ins in this match, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is and rare, how. rare for 1999 WCW. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Even a pay per view. But then, but then I saw this was in the middle of the show, mm-hmm. and I was like, because spoiler alert. Sting won the championship from DDP hmm. in the middle of a nitro. Like I'm talking hour one and a half. In a fucking was night. was it in in the did it happen to be when Raw was coming on? Um, I believe so. I believe so. So that's that makes sense. But okay. So I so like you said, Sorg, there are chapters to the show. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like. You know, let's just see what's at the end of this show. Sword, do you know mm-hmm. that there is a second WCW championship match yeah. on this same Nitro? You know what, man? I didn't even have to look at the end. I was like, I bet there's a three or four way for the same championship at and the end of the Sword, show. Sword, do you know how long this reign of Sting lasts? An hour and a half. Yep, and he loses it thanks to the Macho Man Randy Savage helping out heal DDP. God, fuck this match. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Twenty minutes for nothing. And I looked. I'm like, this better not have been the last championship reign of Sting. No, oh. it's not. He wins it again in September and loses it in a month because he gets stripped of the title due to some bullshit with Goldberg. Oh, no. Can that we still stop probably the longest with these WCW the matches? <laughs> Can we stop with them? There is a reason this company is defunct. <laughs> They're still doing the same thing on a different brand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But- yeah, there's, there's a reason this company if, went out of business. It so, made a lot of shitty choices. Yeah. Okay. If, yeah. If, a lot. A lot of bait and switch. A lot of that. A lot of like. No, there isn't even bait and switch. It's just switch and switch at this point. 
There's no bait, Zorg. So, it's like when you're playing Animal Crossing and you're fishing, but there's no bait on the hook. Uh, uh, Zach, what are you, what were your thoughts? You watched this today. So I, I'm a big DDP guy. Mm-hmm. So uh, mm-hmm. I was surprised. I thought I remembered this match, but uh, I didn't remember it being as good. But maybe it was because like I haven't seen it in so long. But I was like, oh man, this is like pretty stinking solid. And I'll, I'll tell you what I what I really liked was again like people were pooping on the ending. I thought the ending was like stellar because like Bill Collier actually was the one that w- w- used to hammer this into our heads. Was he used to say that like there's a there's a way to do things and you have to do it that way until you don't have to anymore. And then that's when you surprise people. And yeah, I think it was yeah. his way of being like, chill out until you know more and you get better and then you can bend the rules. But like, I felt like that ending, I didn't see that coming. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like I didn't expect the counter the way it was and all that. And I, I thought it was great. Yeah. Yeah. And again, it was just like a hook on the rope to, to not take the cutter. And then he pulled him back into the scorpion death drop. Like right out of nowhere. And this is after a good series of false finishes, probably. Right? The opening was great. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that that was like as close to like an American strong style match as you could possibly get. Mm-hmm. Like, especially the first like four or five minutes. Awesome stuff. Like, seriously, like young guys should like watch that and like see how like basic stuff can be like still very cool. It was also they spent a lot of time out by the entrance, too. I, I thought it was interesting, um, which always is like, why aren't we? You know, the refs just hanging out there. We're not counting. There's all that argument too. But um, but no, it it it, it made it seem strong. I was worried because at the beginning of this match, I'm looking at Sting and Sting, and Sting, and maybe it's because he knew, you know, from knowing that it was he had another match in an hour. It was he had a look in his face like like what the fuck am I about to do? You know. He- he had the same look when he had to wrestle Jeff Hardy in TNA. Mm. Mm. But here we go. <laughs> like yeah. I know, I agree. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but hey, in the meantime, they had uh, they had some good wrestling. Yeah, there there was another thing that he noted, and just recalling, and this may be my member berries uh, 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 going. But uh, I, you know, we uh, for years, years we've talked, we've we've watched raw and kind of talked about how boring it is right i don't mm-hmm. remember ever being bored in this era of three hour wcw nitros nope or no there was a lot of i, mean, I remember being pissed like, yeah. like, you don't i then i didn't i wasn't always happy about it about what was happening and, but i wasn't bored sorry but Rob. the thing is though there was so much going you know they it was all like really for the most part like really short matches or other stuff going on to where it was just a faster paced three hours, whether you liked what was going on or not. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like it's not like we're showing five minutes of a match going to commercial, then a full segment of a match, and then commercial, and then you know the the end of the match in the first two minutes of a segment, and then you know it's mm-hmm. it's it's a lot faster paced. And like I said, even if you didn't necessarily like what was going on and and they did some some shit at that time that was late like it seemed like at times they'd give up on that first hour of nitro or it would be like nothing but promos and setting up stuff with no wrestling <laughs> you know in that and a first hour. match and a cruiserweight match or yeah or that at least yeah but but there were times i remember where it was just and and this was at the height of the all the M- nwo stuff where they would have like the first hour was nothing but just NWO bullshit with like, you mm-hmm. know, with like backstage mm-hmm. segments and, and things like that to where it's like, it might not necessarily have been stuff that dragged, but just, you know, it's like, Oh, at least this is, you know, at least it's going to be over quick. <laughs> that, that era too, like as much as it had negative stuff, it, I think it, it enforced like one of my pet peeves, which was, I, yeah. I, I thought that they did, uh, what one of the things they did really well was the clear cut division lines. Like there were yeah. guys that you knew were only going to be wrestling in certain divisions, certain type of matches. And yeah. then anytime they deviated from that, it felt like a huge deal. Like when a cruiserweight got to compete in something else because they did really well, you were like, Holy crap. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, or like even, I don't know why, like the, one of the guys that always stood out to me and that was buff Bagwell. Mm-hmm. Like he was always that mid card guy. And then like, you could tell that point where, 
we can't hold, we can't keep him in the mid card anymore. The crowd likes him too much. Mm-hmm. And when he like yeah. finally showed, like he came out to challenge somebody that wasn't in his division, the whole place lost their minds. Mm-hmm. I always love. I miss that. Then lose. Well, I mean, <laughs> or, like, or when you would have like, guys like, like that. I, I, I agree that they get a they, shot. You know. So oh, sorry. No, sorry. Uh, I I agree. They did like separate the divisions very well, but that also. If you don't move anyone out of those divisions, then everyone's the same. Like you need to have, I th- I feel like you need to have some fluidity in your roster. Like TNA, ironically, was really good at that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. TNA was really good at that. We may have not liked all the stories and right. stuff, but X Division Kevin Nash. I wish that they would have done the may not like all the stories, but, <laughs> but like, or, or you had we like got world event, champion like Eric, Eric, Eric Young once in a while, you know? Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah. Sorg, Sorg, do you want to hear the ratings breakdown from, from oh, that? No. This, was, this was that era, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah it was. How, how, did, I, I how it did the work out? I love it. <laughs> Go ahead. So um, Nitro did a, did a 3.9. Okay. 3.9 for that week. Raw? Pull the six. Shit. Do you want to hear this raw that obliterated Nitro? Do it. Are you ready for this? All right. Here we go. I got a question after that, too. <laughs> um, the opening match, Kane and X Pac against the Brood mm. in, in a hot two minute, 35 second match. D Lo Brown versus Val Venus in a hot. Three minutes, twenty second match. <laughs> Triple H defeated Billy Gunn with with a less than seven minutes of wrestling. Okay. Mankind in the Big Show defeated Test and the Boss Man less than five minutes of wrestling. Mm-hmm. Ooh. The Union. Godfather beat Jeff Jarrett to not only retain the Intercontinental Championship but win Deborah's services as a hoe. <laughs> in in <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> in under two minutes. Oh, in wow. under two minutes, mind you. Uh, and the last two matches are both no contests. Bradshaw versus Ken Shamrock. No contest. Also, no time given. Thanks, Pro Wrestling Wiki. Assholes. <laughs> and, and the main event in a hot three-minute match. The Rock versus Shane McMahon. Jeez. No contest. Jeez. Now was this was this coming out of I mean I don't think anything big happened at it but when was backlash was that would that have been that <laughs> You're weekend? obsessed with backlash backlash no no no, no, no. You're talking just, about backlash well no no I'm just saying was that like the the post you know like the the Monday after a pay per view or something I I don't think so because the and, week before the and, main event was Russia versus Viscera so. <laughs> And Ugh. when was when was SmackDown? Wait, when was the on. SmackDown pilot? Was that like the week before? Yeah, maybe. So wait, wait, wait. I, yeah, I got I got to hold. I got to hold for a second because yeah. I pulled up WWE yeah, yeah. Network because I was going to see what the pay per view was around there, and I just saw mm-hmm. that there's a Best of the Nexus <laughs> that they just posted. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, Whoa. yeah, it's like the anniversary of the Nexus. Oh wow! Look at all. Yeah, those, I'm gonna watch that. Look at all those those armbands and unfulfilled careers. It's been ten <laughs> years. Holy shit! Jeez. Who, who's left out of Texas? None Dan- of them. Daniel oh, Bryan. No. Oh, Daniel Titus. Bryan. Yeah, kind of a no, wait, no, Titus was the next one. No, no. Yeah, Titus wasn't when in was... this group. This person. Yeah, yeah I, dude, I loved Wade Barrett. Oh, I was yeah. a Wade Barrett. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Jeez. Like, yeah, Sorg. There, there wasn't anything. I don't think. Oh, you, you guys go I on because they... I'm just gonna watch oh. the Nexus. <laughs> yeah, watch they this are one. the man. young oh, dying sons. Oh, the main event of this is Barrett and uh, Randy Orton at Survivor Series 2010. Was was nice. that when Cena had to ref it or something? Uh, yes, it looks like he is. Hey, okay. Sword, do you know what's on? Do you know what's on the week of Raw after this show? What? Nicole Bass versus Deborah in a nightgown match. Oh my! Ooh. Oh, I, I twelve wow. seconds long. Why do nobody I asked for that? that. No, no. Honestly, she lasted longer than I thought she would. What year was that? Just, just running down that card. 99. That like peak union. 99. <laughs> no, that wasn't the union, I don't think. What's because it? remember, Big Show just showed up. Mm-hmm. 
like in, That's in Paul Dick, White. Like yeah. in February. Big Show just showed up in February of that year. <laughs> Did he show up uh, during a cage match? Like, oh my god, it's Paul yeah, White. He, he, yeah, he came out from under the ring. He and was big, threw... big, nasty Paul White, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, do you know why he was called the Big Show? Mm-hmm. Why? Well, I, I don't even know what the mm-hmm. gimmick is. Because the initials are TBS. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Big, big Show was Voodoo Kid Mafia before Voodoo Kid Mafia was cool. Mm-hmm. That's pretty funny. <laughs> All right. I like the Voodoo Kid well, Mafia. We're still waiting. We do have... <laughs> Another assignment from the professor. Oh, God. <laughs> this fu- when do I get to give him an assignment? Of that? Ironically, Ooh. it's Deborah versus Nicole Bass from. <laughs> hey, 12 <laughs> seconds. 